Hello everybody, this is Cholera, and welcome to another commentary from the Collegiate Star League. This time we fast forwarded a couple of weeks, and uh, we're going to be casting the finals of the CSL coming up soon. Right here is the semi-finals of the CSL, um, and this was played between Rutgers and University of Texas about a week ago, and uh, we'll be having the finals on um, this Sunday, April 26th. 6 uh, at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But let's get to this game. This is game one of a best of five series here on uh, Chipung Ryung here at game one. And we've gotten um, J2 Tifa playing for University of Texas and Nesh playing for Rutgers, which means Tifa is the yellow Protoss and Nesh is the green turn here and uh, since these schools have made it through um, many many games already you know in the playoffs and before the playoffs uh, really the quality of play I expect to be much higher than it was before note that Diggity uh, and Terror were in this game but as observers and uh, let's see what's gonna happen this game looks like we've got a pylon going up for Tifa the yellow toss and uh, here we go Nesh probably thinking about a wall in here on Chapung Ryung. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed these uh, commentaries on collegiate games. It's definitely getting down to the wire here and um, I'll be putting up information very soon about where you can watch the live uh, streaming of the uh, finals. Um, I'm not going to tell you uh, who the finals are between just yet, obviously, because this is the semifinals we're watching. But, uh, you know, they are definitely going to be very exciting. Uh, once again, it's this Sunday. Um, you know, really, for those of you guys who are watching now, really tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, it should be a blast to watch. Um, Diggity and Moltrap probably will be uh, joining me uh, and commentating, or it might be Diggity himself, depends on uh, what eventually happens. But definitely us three will be involved in the making of uh, those commentaries, and it should be really cool. The first uh, season of the Kalitra Star League has really um, been more successful than even I thought was possible, so a uh, big shout out to them. Anyway, looks like we've gotten a standard opening from both players here. Um, Rax and Gas here for the turn player, having a little bit of trouble chasing out this annoying probe from uh, Tifa. Meanwhile, um, Nesh has also scouted Tifa here, and Tifa has gone for a uh, one-gate core here. And, uh, of course, that is very standard on Chipung Ryung. Chipung Ryung um, lends itself pretty well to uh, Reaver harassment, so we'll see if the Protoss player Tifa decides to go for that, or uh, if he goes for some kind of fast expand build or whatnot. Um, we'll see. It's not a bad uh, macro map either. I, I could uh, very well see, we could very well see two fast expands from both players. Um, that's also very, very standard. So uh, we'll just have to see what happens here. Perhaps uh, building a factory here, we're going to probably see Nesh um, a little bit late here, looking at his minerals and his gas. He could have uh, gotten that down a little bit ago, but he puts it down. Nice APMs for both players, as you can see, 300 and 200 something. Uh, of course, if you guys have been following um, my amateur casts, you would uh, probably know that starting off APM means very little. Um, we've seen players who are very good and very bad, both with incredibly high APMs in the beginning, so <laughs> we'll see which it is um, pretty soon, though, as the game progresses. we got a probe hanging out here for Tifa, and it looks like Tifa is going to continue to get scouted. Uh, SCV going to get up the ramp, actually, so nice work there by um, Nesh. Nesh is going to have a good spot here inside of Tifa's base. And he's not going to see that much. He's going to see uh, just some probes mining. And uh, what do we got going up here? Oh, look at this. We got a proxy pylon hidden here for the uh, Protoss player. I'm not sure if Nesh has caught wind of this um, because he might have uh, suspected that there's uh, you know fewer than, than what he expects in terms of the buildings or maybe not. We'll have to see. Okay, sorry about that. A um, little bit of pause and a little bit of lag. Um, basically, I'm trying to find out the best way of uh, possibly, um, you know, casting these games. And unfortunately, I had to turn off the sound in order to uh, reduce the lag a little bit there. Um, it just, uh, unfortunately, until I get a new system, that's the best I can do with these casts. But anyway, um, let's go take a look at what's going to happen here. We've got a classic situation developing. Two-gate uh, proxy... DTs possibly against uh, a fast expanding Terran. So we'll see what happens and what the Terran decides to research. Also, that's going to be critical. Um, is he going to go for mines first or is he going to go for siege? That is the question. And let's take a look inside of the Toss's base. If he's got the um, Citadel, uh, if he's got the Templar Archives rather going up yet. 
And no, another gateway actually going up for him. So this is really strange. What is he going to go for is the question. Um, I don't know why he's got four gateways, two proxy and two in his base. If he's thinking about DTs, you definitely don't need that. In fact, what you need is a Templar Archive. So not sure what's going on with the uh, Toss's play here. Um, let's take a look at what the Terran's researching, though. Oh, and he's going for Siege. So this is going to make him less prepared for DTs than he would be otherwise. Um, but however, I, I don't see another, uh, I don't see a Templar Archives up anywhere. This is really strange. And look at this, we've gotten Zealot Legs? Oh my god, could Tifa think he is the Mantos? I think so, actually, wow, I can't believe what I'm seeing here. Tifa is thinking that he's going to pull a man move by going for uh, some kind of speed lot rush. Very, very interesting play here from J2 Tifa. Very bizarre, I gotta say, from this uh, guy from UT. Um, he's also put up a bunch of pylons at the back there. I have no idea why he's put pylons here. I guess maybe to stop a vulture run by uh, or a sneak out the back, but that's an expensive way to do it because uh, those pylons could get destroyed later and that's gonna hurt his side count a lot. Um, so it's a very strange play here. And meanwhile, the Terran seems a little bit oblivious to all of it. Not that it really matters, because uh, right now he can't be doing that much about it anyway, about a speed lot rush. He could be doing more, of course, against uh, DTs, but we're not going to see DTs. We're going to see speed lots. Wow. This is just very, very curious play from Tifa. I have not seen this since Reach did this on, uh, I forgot against whom, but um, on Harmony he did that. And it was a pretty funny game. But let me tell you, even the Mantos didn't pull it off. Probably because he was tired from hours of um, of, of enjoying his time with female fans. But right now, we're going to see if Tifa from UT, uh, from the Longhorns, um, can handle this. I mean, going for a Manlot attack here, this is just... Does he have the massive, massive... Uh, cojones to be able to do this. I mean, it's going to be tough. A bunker going up in the front also for the uh, Terran player who has no idea what's going on here. He's going to try to get a scout down into the natural and if he sees that there's no um, nexus here, he's going to definitely suspect some kind of weirdness going on. Uh, and there's definitely is a little bit of weirdness. There are speed lots. I don't know if he spotted the fact that there's speed on these zealots. Um, but that's going to tell him, clue him in on a lot. And uh, we're going to see if these four tanks can defend against uh, this mass of zealots. Okay, now the Terran definitely knows it's coming. Can the Terran block his ramp, though? I mean, if he can block his ramp, that would be it. Um, on the other hand, if he can't block his ramp, then uh, Tifa could win this game really quickly. Uh, but if he... Okay, so anyway... Whoa, looks like more zealots coming in from the upper left. Sorry, I didn't catch those. But they're going to be able to get up. It looks like they got in the tank at, uh, under the hill. But look at this. Nash doing a great job blocking here with his SCVs. I can't believe it. Um, he's managing to, to keep his stuff alive here. And his SCVs are actually doing a, quite a good job of blocking. And now it looks like the bunker's gone down. But the zealots are almost all dead here. Uh, looks like five zealots are going to get up. However, they're badly damaged, and it seems that uh, they're unable to get up to the tanks. So, Tifa's attack, wow, it's still ongoing, but I got to think this is a failed attack. I don't see any reinforcements coming on the minimap. It's over for this attack, and I got to think that Tifa is way behind now. He really didn't do much damage at all. Now he's getting his expansion, but um, he is going to be so weak after this. Uh, you know, not having resources, not having you know any any um, you know expansion, not really taking out SCVs or tanks or anything. Uh, meanwhile, he's thinking about getting DTs now, but I think it's a little late for that. Um, there's vultures out, and there's mines now. So uh, with mines, that should be it. That should be um, you know perfect defense against a, a very late DT attack. Um, because there's also turrets around too, uh, or at least previously there were.